Hello, I'm High Hill Knight. Welcome to my channel. These are my thoughts on WWE Crown Jewel. I'm not going to talk about the politics. Uh, that is not important at this time. I've been a subscriber to the WWE, WWE Network since day one. So the company already has my money. The show is going to go on one way or the other. So I, I'm not going to get into the politics about uh, Crown Jewel. But I am going to say that uh, it made me nervous about the program itself because you got the company trying to promote uh, Crown Jewel. You got them trying to promote Evolution. You got to try and figure out what to do now that Roman Reigns had to step down because of uh, health. You got to figure out a way to effectively write out John Cena and Daniel Bryan from the show. So I was very apprehensive about the show. And it's kind of weird to have a World Cup in 2018 that features only American athletes. And not only that, but the initial lineup was seven white people and one Latino. And the Latino had a face mask. So I was wondering, okay, I know the women can't compete and be on the program. Uh, Renee Young was on the commentator booth. But and I know the women can't be on, in the ring, but uh, do they have a <laughs> issue with uh, non-white people, non-white Americans or something like that? Uh, so I was very happy that Bobby Lashley was placed in for John Cena. And I'm a John Cena fan, but I didn't like that he was just, okay, we're going to put John Cena in because he's so popular and important, and, you know, he does have to wrestle for a spot. So, yeah, just having Bobby Lashley just to put some mix of color in this World Cup was great. And by the way, we had the May Young Classic. We just got finished with the May Young Classic. That was much of a, of a World Cup than this thing to declare the best in the world. Uh, so... Other than that, it was a really great show. It was uh, fantastic. Uh, first of all, Pyro. Oh my goodness, how I have missed Pyro. I missed Pyro. I missed Pyro so much. I might just watch all the Saudi Arabia shows just so I can enjoy the Pyro. I almost don't care what happens. Just for the fact that there's Pyro. Oh, I've been watching wrestling for over 30 years, so I greatly miss Pyro. So yeah, Pyro. Woohoo! Uh, and those wonderful introductions for the uh, Crown Jewel participants. Fantastic. Uh, tremendous. Uh, uh, incredible. And, and I was really excited. Like, okay, this is going to be interesting. Especially since Kurt Angle lost in the first round clean. I thought he was going to win or at least reach the finals because he did all those long standing promos. You know, he's, you know, a good one says he ever was and that kind of stuff. I figured he was going to go the whole way. Maybe because Cena was in the tournament maybe, or, or something like that. But still, he lost clean. Maybe that was part of the suit because you know, he wears American colors, whatever. He lost clean. Like, okay, anything can happen. And then The Miz, he gets to the finals. I'm like, I thought he was going to the semifinals at best. And I love The Miz. The Miz was my favorite person in the whole tournament. The Miz was all hoping that I would at least reach it to the finals uh, because he'd been uh, so underutilized. Uh, you know, he... he, he uh, is an upper mid car guy. He, I wanted to have one more shot of world title. So I was very happy that he got to the top. It was like, wow. And for the most part, he won clean. So here we go. This clean victory is left to right over and over again. And then, uh, I mean, you know, um, uh, Drew McIntyre didn't interfere in one of the rounds, but still, it's like, go well, great, great. This is interesting. This is wonderful. And it's like, then Shane McMahon. As soon as Shane McMahon walked out on stage, I knew some nonsense was going to happen. Okay, we already got nonsense with this World Cup that originally featured several white guys and one Latino, and at least they replaced it with the uh, Johnson with the with the African American. Uh, it's also weird. Okay, why are they all Americans? I mean, I thought maybe okay, it was a passport uh, issue, but uh, Rusev was there, Shinsuke Nakamura was there, Drew McIntyre was there, Sheamus was there, Sanzaro was there, Kofi Kingston was there. So you could have other people from all around the world. A picture space in the show. So why are all these best of the world all American? And then, you know, every time someone says the best of the world, they bring up CM Punk. And, you know, Shane McMahon's like, well, I don't believe he's in the tournament. But, you know, whenever someone says the best of the world, someone out there will respond, you know, reply to CM Punk. So, okay, fine. But still, the actual tournament was going well. This match was nice and surprising on who was winning and who was facing. And then Shane McMahon, as soon as he came out, I knew something was going to happen. I never would have expected him inserting himself into the match. I figured there would be all types of chicanery and craziness, but for him to insert himself in the match, use those same tired moves, win the match, celebrate like he just won the Super Bowl 
by doing one play of the game, and now well, McMahon is the best in the world. Just like, was this the plan all along? If Cena had, had, had stayed in, was this the plan all along for make other man the best in the world? I mean, it feels like it feels like when uh, Carmella first won the Money in the Bank, and they had uh, uh, James Ellsworth interfere and pass uh, the, the, the the briefcase. It creates controversy. It creates talking points. It gets attention. But at the same time, what was the point of going through this tournament and going through all these matches and doing all these promos if it's just going to come down to a McMahon tossing himself into the lineup at the last moment and it's like a whole big old thing over nothing. So I felt so deflated. And so I was like, I just didn't care. I was finally getting into the show and in the whole tournament thing, and one okay, two heels, Ziggler and uh, Miz. You know, and even the whole well, if you uh, fail, if that dumb person fails, you'll you'll be fired, and you crawl back to Raw. What? What was the point of all this? It made no sense. I was really angry. That just really deflated the show. But on some good notes, everything else happened. So all the other matches, except for the finals, wonderful. Uh, um, the New Day versus The Bar. I knew The New Day was going to lose. I love The New Day so much. But I knew they were going to lose. At least they came out with that cool intro with the uh, flying carpet. A very slow-moving flying carpet, but I guess safety first. <laughs> but yeah, that was cool. Uh, Shinsuke, uh, not sorry, um, uh, AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe. I keep struggling to say that and speak it because I just wasn't looking forward to it. I don't understand that match was made at the last minute to appease down and buy it so he can be written out of the show. But at the same time, I've seen them wrestle several times this year. I've seen them wrestle in TNA slash Impact slash Global Force, whatever they're calling themselves. <laughs> you know, I've seen them wrestle so many times. So it was like, okay, here's like the 30th or 40th time of me watching AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe. They're great competitors. They're great performers. But still, it's like, their storyline was finished, and now we're just getting this extra epilogue, and it's like, oh, AJ Styles won. Whoop-dee-doo. And then uh, we have the Universal title match. And I was surprised anyone won the match. I honestly thought there was going to be some, like a double disqualification or some type of double countout or some type of shenanigans where no one would win because you knew the original plan was to have Roman Reigns hold the title for a long time. And so, okay, do you have Brock Lesnar win and hijack the Universal title? Do you have Braun Strowman win, who they clearly don't want to be champion? In fact, I'm not sure what they want him to do because he started the year as a heel. Then he turned face and won the tag titles with the little kid. Then he suddenly turned heel again against Roman Reigns and the Shield. And now he's turning face again and going to feud with Baron Corbin, even though it seemed like they were setting up a feud with Drew McIntyre, are they going to, he's going to feud with both McIntyre and Baron Corbin? What? And now we got uh, Brock Lesnar being the Universal Champion. And sure, at, you know, the next pay-per-view Survivor Series, Brock Lesnar versus AJ Styles, which we've already seen, you know, before, but still, okay, Brock Lesnar versus AJ Styles. Should be a great match, but still, it's like, take a good look at the Universal title. We just got the Universal title back on TV full time, and now it's going to be Taking off uh, part time again. Whoop de doo. Oh well, at least we we'll get to have more of Paul Heyman doing his uh, introduction of, uh, of Brock Lesnar. And then the main event, the main event. Before I talk about the main event, let's take a moment to appreciate what has gone on with this week. I thought it was 2018, but for, apparently this week began with. WWE Evolution and all women's pay per view featuring opening with Trish Stratus, Lita, Mickey James, and Alicia Fox. And then a battle royal featuring a lot of classic women wrestlers like Alundra Blaze and Kelly Kelly and Ivory. Okay, that's how the week starts. And then the week concludes uh, with a special appearance by Hulk Hogan opening up the all men pay per view crown jewel. <laughs> and concludes with Undertaker, uh, the mayor of Knoxville, Tennessee, Kane, Triple H, and coming out of retirement, Shawn Michaels. What year is this? I thought it was 2018. What year is it? <laughs> but the match was wonderful. 
Uh, it was really exciting, really worth the effort. Only thing I didn't like was uh, Shawn Michaels bald. Okay, I, I, I am not used to that. I don't like it at all. It just doesn't work for me. It's like that SpongeBob SquarePants movie where the king loses the crown and you see his bald head. It's like bald, bald, bald. And we, you know, it's still a great, you know, to, to watch it perform and watch all four of those guys perform. It's like bald, bald. So if he does have another match, I hope he grows some hair. And I was really surprised that Dick Generation right X won. I mean, Triple H won Super Showdown against the Undertaker, and you, and you know the WWE loves 50 50 booking. So I figured DX was going to lose, but no, DX won. Maybe they figure let's make sure Shawn Michaels wins a match just in case he can't uh, perform later on. I mean, he, he gets winded just running down to the ramp and doing that one around the, the ring. So, <laughs> but yeah, uh, really great show overall. Very happy to see Gen Generation X win. Happy to see Hulk Hogan. Happy for just all those surprises in the tournaments and those special introductions, even though the ring announcer forgot that uh, Dolph Ziggler was a two-time world champion. <laughs> forgot about that. Uh, pyro. Pyro. Oh, Pyro. <laughs> and just uh, an amazing conclusion to a very full week of wrestling. I mean, along with it being a confusing year, this week was overstuffed with wrestling, Okay. We had, let's see here, we had WWE Evolution, that was about three and a half hours. We had Raw, that was two hours, oh no, excuse me, three hours. We had SmackDown, that was two hours. We got uh, 205 Live, that's one hour. NXT, one hour. NXT UK, one hour. Crown Jewel, approximately uh, four hours. Plus Mixed Max Challenge, about 15 minutes. That's around 16 hours of just the wrestling. Okay, that's not including the pre-shows. That's not including the um, uh, reality TV shows. And that's not even including the house party Halloween special. You know, just the wrestling comes about 16 hours a full week that I think took place in 2018. But considering who performed all through this week, I'm not too sure. <laughs> but yeah, very exciting week. Uh, start to finish, top to bottom, and except for some really bizarre choices, a McMahon is the best in the world. That is so stupid. That is so utterly stupid. I can only think maybe they figure, okay, let's put it on Shane. That way, none of the other uh, WWE superstars have to have the burden of carrying around that trophy and representing some of the happy celebration. I mean, look at Braun Strowman. He won that greatest uh, battle royal. They don't talk about it all. They don't bring out that big old trophy, that big green belt. Where, where, where is it? What happened to that giant green belt that uh, Braun Strowman had? Okay? So maybe that's why they put it on Shane. Like, hey, you take them all. You possibly turn heel. He's a good guy. Acting like he's a won this big old thing. I don't know. It really put a damper on the whole a bit as far as I'm sure. But everything else, wonderful with Crown Jewel. Great uh, evolution. Great... Uh, uh, Raw, great SmackDown, great all the things in the network, and yeah, wonderful to see so many classic people uh, come back for one more <laughs> match. Okay, those are my thoughts on WWE Crown Jewel. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or dislike, share, and subscribe. Once again, I'm High Hill Knight, and remember... Find inspiration everywhere.